Hi, I'm Bruce Roberts, Head of Research at FAIR. A question I get asked quite frequently is why are we seeing an increase in the prevalence of food allergy? It's a great question. And in fact, food allergy is on the rise. Recent data from the CDC indicates that the number of hospital admissions due to food-induced adverse reactions is on the rise. Now, there may be a number of contributing factors that are promoting this alarming increase in food allergy, but the prevailing wisdom is it's a combination of the microbiome and diet that basically overall determines the development of food allergy. Now, ordinarily, our immune cells in our gut uh, are passive and they don't react to foreign proteins. And this is because of the fact that we acquire beneficial bacteria through our diet early after birth that condition those immune cells so they stay in a passive state and they tend to be tolerant and do not react to foreign proteins. But if there's a perturbation in terms of the composition of the microbes within our gut, that can lead to an imbalance. And so when we first encounter a food protein, we may overreact to it. Now, an important aspect in this regard is that antibiotics, they can significantly reduce the number of beneficial bacteria in our gut and lead to a situation in which you do have this imbalance and much more likelihood of actually having an adverse response when you first encounter a food protein. But it's not just the composition of the bacteria, it's diet as well, because these beneficial microbes require particular nutrients, fiber in particular. Diets that are high in fat and low in fiber can actually reduce the level of these beneficial bacteria while at the same time promote the expansion of pro-inflammatory bacteria which exacerbate the condition. So it's a composition of the microbiome, the bacteria in our guts, in conjunction with diet that really dictates whether we're gonna develop an adverse response or not to newly ingested food proteins. Now, even if we have the right microbes and we have the right diet, there can be circumstances which can lead to the development of food allergies. And that's because our first encounter with a food protein might be through the skin. Now, ordinarily, the skin provides a barrier, a protective barrier that stops us from being exposed to allergens in the environment. But if you have a medical condition like eczema, the barrier is disrupted and it allows for the leakage of food proteins across the skin and that can lead to the generation of an immune response, such that now if you actually encounter that food protein in your gut, after having seen it first in the skin, you can promote an alarm system, and that will actually provoke the immune response and one would experience an adverse response. So it's really a question of how we actually first encounter proteins, whether it's through the gut, as it should be, or whether it's through the skin, and the context as well that will determine whether we will accept or reject foods. Now, in terms of trying to correct this, immunotherapy is the approach that we are pursuing in the clinic in terms of trying to undo what has occurred. It's trying to teach the immune system to not respond to these food proteins. Now, this is not an easy task because the immune system is hardwired to remember what it perceives to be as a threat. So the best we can do today is desensitize individuals to some of these food proteins so they don't overreact when they encounter them accidentally or through the diet. So the question as to why is food allergy on the rise is not a simple question. Additional research is required, and we at FAIR are committed to finding the answers. Thank you.